Welcome, everybody. It's Tuesday, December 19th. It's 5.04 p.m. for the Middlesex Select Board meeting. We have Peter Hood, our chair, who is in Colorado on the Zoom. We have guests Lee Pollen. And we have, what is your name, sir? Bob, Bob Butler. Bob Butler. Hi, welcome, Mr. Butler. And we have Orca. And we have four of us. Um, Bridget is absent. So, um, thank you, everybody. Um, we're going to move to the first order, which is approving the minutes of the December 5th, 2023 regular select board meeting action likely. Um, any discussion about that? Okay, is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Okay, Randy, second is, were you, you weren't here. Victor was not here. Okay. Uh, a second. Okay, Peter, Peter seconds it. All right, so is there enough? There's the three the of us three were of here, us. yep, yeah. okay. So all those in favor of approving the December 5th um, meeting minutes, say aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it, and Vic abstains because he wasn't here. Um, we're going to review, amend, and approve the agenda for the December 19th, that's today, 2023 select board meeting, action likely. Are there any amendments? Yeah. Just going to let Dorinda serve as de facto collector of delinquent taxes until the March 2024 town meeting and hope somebody runs. Okay, so we're not going to do that? Yeah, no. just getting removed. Okay, all right. Any other amendments or additions? No? Already? Did you? You want to make, make the, the motion? As uh, amended by uh, Sarah. Randy, a second. All righty. Randy seconds. Vic first. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All righty. Great. Okay, then. So we, oh, wow. It's 5 0. It's perfect timing perfect for Mr. Timing. Butler. <laughs> the informational meeting with Bob Butler of Butler Technology to discuss the town's IT needs action unlikely. Mr. Butler, you have the floor. Welcome. Um, I'm was uh, would prefer questions what am i uh, okay let me oh. let oh, me yeah. take it over okay so, dorinda you have the floor i have the floor i met with bob last friday um took him around showed him all of our computer equipment um talked to him briefly about what our issues were um what was a priority for us that there's a possibility that um you know that we're looking to make a move possibly to another IT person. Um, we would be looking for somebody who could help not just support us, but give us guidance when we need new equipment. Um, we talked brief, told, talked about maybe going to the cloud with the server, that that was something the select board had talked about. So he made a list of all of our equipment and kind of got the feel of what we're looking for. So I asked him to come into the meeting so you guys could ask questions of him and, um, you know, take it from there. I know what the first thing you really want to do is talk to an IT guy. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So at any rate, I'm, uh, I've had a business for uh, 30 something years now, I guess, 25, 30 years. Uh, I'm over in Waterbury. Um, I do exactly this kind of work. I have a few municipalities that I also work with, uh, including Waterbury. Um, and this is what I've looked at here is all well within my scope. Uh, I think somebody here know the reference came through Tom Burrell that yeah. would be really uh, I work with Tom out of uh, uh, Panergy um, doing some work in database uh, design and okay. Okay. Uh, transfer. And uh, I had asked Tom a couple of questions about some of our IT needs, and he passed on your contact info. Uh, and that's when Dorinda had reached out. Oh, okay. So yeah, I worked with. Uh, Tom was originally an instructor of mine uh, more than 20 years ago, and I've just struck up a, 
professional relationship with him, and he works. He's a, a full-time professor, but he does a certain amount of consulting on the side. Uh, really great asset, and that's. I think if, if you worked with him, you know Tom. Uh, yeah. Um, the other part, of, the other other part of this equation is that I've served in many aspects of the municipal function. Been on select board. Uh, I've been everything but the dog catcher, pretty much now. Uh, so I understand that, and I actually I really enjoy it. So uh, I don't I don't know what else you, you and you probably don't have any questions, but. Uh, <laughs> Is your it like when you talked with him about like just the fee structure? Is it similar to what we're getting? We from, didn't talk fee didn't, structure didn't because okay. I didn't want to go through all that and then have it all be repeated. We kind of just talked about our needs mm -hmm. and like when the power goes out every weekend and we come in every Monday morning and we have to, you know, we got a problem. This the printer doesn't work or this doesn't work. It's like. The response that we need that possibly it's just a matter of a phone call that says yeah just go reset the server or something to that extent but I didn't get into any of the fees or how his billing works or anything like that uh, my billing it traditionally I mean I'm uh, I don't mind working on, under any one of a number of ways but uh, for uh, all of my other clients, I work on a time and materials basis. Uh, they could, I guess I'd be called your classic break fix, as opposed to somebody that pay, asks you to pay a subscription fee. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, although I would consider that, I don't have a problem doing that. I've been in business long enough that it just, it all comes down to a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the time piece of that, do you have a rate that, uh, that you typically work with for municipalities? Yeah, I charge $125 an hour. Uh, yeah, the, it, and it, it, it depends, but basically it's $125 an hour. I charge one-way travel to encourage you to not call me out uh, like every other a reasonable IT person now, you can get things done, largely done remotely. I, I like doing that because of the convenience and because I keep weird hours. And sometimes I work weekends and sometimes really early in the morning. Uh, I can get in and get dialed in and things. And it, it's a way of keeping eye on people uh, or equipment. Um, but I do like to be on site occasionally. It's just you can't get the, the information you get from people is so much better than from sitting in my basement mm -hmm. there. do you have like a team of people that you work with so that like when you're on vacation there's someone there that helps you it's or? Tom okay Tom is Tom's my, my backup your backup yeah okay. uh, and which begs the obvious question I have uh, that there's a limited amount of me uh, I tend to work like I said, a lot. Uh, it's I work evenings and mornings and, and what have you. Um, and there'll be occasions where you'll have something scheduled, like oh, I, I need a printer installed, and I will schedule that with you and done that. If, say, for instance, uh, the town of Waterbury, their email server goes down, I'm going to call up uh, whoever my contact is and say, look. Waterbury's email is down, the entire town is down for, for that. I'm going to beg off installing your printer. And in exchange for that, uh, when, it, when your turn in the hopper comes and you've got something that's you crashed around in your ears, uh, that my, my clients, the other clients, uh, will offer the same. You know, it's basically um, in the 25 years I've been doing this, this has worked well. I'm not stretched so thin that I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, off, I'm moving all the time. I'm really busy, but I'm not stretched so thin that I can't accommodate that. And you would have additional capacities for what Middlesex needs are, you feel? In, in, in addition to the workload that you've already got? With yeah, oh yeah. I understand you've got three or four municipalities that you're working I, with already? Uh, yes. Yes, I, I guess it doesn't matter. I work with the, uh, Duxbury, which is 
largely the town garage, uh, the town of Waterbury, which is uh, a going concern. They've got a lot going on there, and the town of Eden. Okay. So you know, it's not uh, it's it, it's not big. It's uh, they're all smaller communities. Uh, How Water long have you been with Waterbury? How long have I been doing that? Uh, with, yeah, with Waterbury. With Waterbury. Uh, I want to say 10 years. Okay. So I'm, I imagine there would be, you, you would be able to provide us with references. Yes, if we absolutely. To, yeah. Um, and so the, the question I have, which I'm not going to be able to articulate, but Dorinda, you will, about the, <laughs> moving over the emails, like changing the emails. Um, did you talk with Mr. Butler I did, about that? and when I told him what email we were using, he went, ugh. OK. <laughs> so we were all on the same page on that one. <laughs> it, it sounds, you need to, well, first of all, migrating out of Rackspace would probably be a very good thing. Uh, I think you've probably had some fun with it earlier this year. Um, and going probably Office 365, which is where everybody should be going. I've finally gotten around to that. Uh, the, it is, it makes a lot of sense now. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, moving up into that is a good idea. And transferring all of that over for us to 365 is something that you're mm -hmm. able to do. Yep. Okay. How about uh, we've been talking about a new server now um, for so you spec out all the equipment that meets our needs. You do all of that, correct? I think yeah. Just to to do that is that is certainly a large part of what I do. Is it's not just fixing things and making them work, but it's really providing you the guidance and the background around the stuff to take that off your hands. To you know, I mean, you don't go and spec out the pieces that go into your car that you right. get fixed. And I, I'll do that. I'll make a recommendations if there are options. I will advise you as to which ones those options are and, and what the relative merits are. Uh, Bob, it's, uh, it's Peter Hood on the Zoom. Um, you know, we're in, a, we're in a bit of a tough spot here to the extent we've had um, some dissatisfaction with our, uh, with our existing uh, company we've been working with. And uh, that, that is the reason uh, Dorinda has reached out to you and we encouraged her to, uh, to do that. Um, what, I would, what I would suggest is that the next step, I mean, if anybody else has any other questions, we can, we can ask questions. But what I would suggest is, I guess, a two-pronged approach to this. Um, one is to give us, uh, in particular, a proposal to update our server, whether you think going to the cloud is the right way to go or, or staying in-house, and if so, what equipment we would need and what you would recommend and what the, what the cost of that uh, project would be. And then the second thing is the, uh, is the puzzle of the email that we have to deal with. All right, hang on a second. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tease that out a little bit. Uh, it seemed to me that you asked both those questions was about, about email. And, and that you, you really want to be, Office 365 uh, is probably your best option. I certainly have a number of places that uh, I have on-site exchange servers, which is hosting your own email. You don't want to do that. I'm moving all of my clients uh, judiciously uh, uh, over to Office 365, mm -hmm. which is just yeah. basically a hosted email server by Microsoft. Yep. Yep. No, I understand that. But I think, I mean, I, just to finish up my thought, I think there are three pieces of this. One is to give us some idea of how you would handle and what your estimate of the necessary time would be to provide ongoing support. Uh, and I know that's a bit of a guess, but um, having seen the size of our town and what we are, I suspect you would have some thoughts about what that would be. And, uh, and then the... Uh, email and probably third the server. I, I don't know. We're we're very motivated to deal with the email problem uh, sooner rather than later because that's been a real thorn in our side. And you are uh, the other question I have for you is uh, we're closely aligned and integrated with our friends at Nemeric. Oh, I yes, I have a, a, a lot of time, uh, quality time with Nemeric. Um, okay. Yeah. So no, I'm, I'm keenly aware of it, and it's uh, uh, you and 
you guys and and I think every other town in Vermont are uh, uh, are Nemric. So, yep, done yeah, a lot with it. Much. Uh, and and uh, uh, I've got a good working relationship. One of the things that that I'm good at is working with other vendors uh, in, 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 towards a common goal. I, I play well in the sandbox. Um, and uh, I've certainly got a, a, a very reasonable relationship with, with Nemric. That's great, thank you. Um, other board members, do you agree with, uh, with that approach that we ask him to go ahead and come back with that information? Randy still has a question. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify okay. one of the things that Peter was asking for there is um, uh, what I heard was you had asked for a proposal in a budget for you know meeting the needs um, in, in listening to Bob earlier it sounds like the uh, traditional relationship with the other towns he's been doing time and material were you asking for a proposal for services based on the needs or just for budgeting purposes um, I would say mostly for budgeting purposes I, I you know, as, as we well know, if we have some major catastrophe, uh, he's going to potentially need to put in a lot more time. And to estimate and guesstimate for those catastrophes is hard to do. But assuming things go reasonably well, just to get some idea of how many hours he thinks it would be, um, I think would be helpful in the decision process. That's where I was going. You know, I, I, that, that's an interesting thing, and I, what I would say is that you guys are going to have, or at least I, I would approach it this way, is you guys have a pretty good idea of how much you use your IT services already because you've been, you, you, you've experienced that with your current vendor. Uh, you know, you, and then if you wanted more but didn't get it or wanted less and didn't get it, that might be a, a good indicator right there. I, I could take a guess, but I, I really, it, it goes down. The town of Eden, for instance, wants to kind of go it alone quite a bit, and, or, or, or much more. Um, and it, it varies. Uh, they've had a change in town clerks, and uh, I used to do a lot there, and I'm doing a lot less now. Uh, it, it's, so I think you guys control that, and that's, that's what uh, Time of Materials is especially good for. It's sort of... It, it, it let it lets you uh, manage that. Do you do like monthly health checks or quarterly health checks or whatever, and come in and see there's no issues with anything? Or um... excellent question, and the answer is it depends. It's so. For instance, if the town of Waterbury, I'm in the site looking at it enough that I, I kind of can keep my eye on, on things, that there's not much that gets behind me. Other places I work for, I, you know, I, I don't hear from them for six, six months, you know, sometimes even longer, so that it, uh, and, and that, that's problematic uh, because I don't have eyes on. Um, and it, uh, but I, I, don't, I don't have a built-in, I need to be working six hours a, a, a month, you know, to, you know, checking in on stuff. I don't, uh, I haven't found that to be, uh, quite frankly, in your best interest. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I treat my clients like how I would do it for myself. Um, and I'll tell you if I think there's something different. If something's set up and it's running, uh, you really what it gets down to is risk management. You want to, what are the essential services that you have to have up and running, you know, absolutely, and those are the ones that you, you pay more attention to. The things that are like, oh, well, you know, it's an inconvenience, but it's just that, that does not necessitate as much attention. So uh, I don't know how to explain it any more than that. It's, you know. Bob, that makes, that makes sense to me. Well, all I'm suggesting is, we are not, we are, I would say, some of us more than others, sophisticated computer users, but we are not IT technicians. And when we get forced into that role, that's a problem for us and usually a bad, usually a bad situation. Um, so just, you know, having some, I mean, I don't know what, when we, when we get up and running, I don't know what the reasonable 
uh, Dorinda calls them a health check thing would be whether once a month you go in and check on things you think you should be looking at um, or whether it's once a quarter or once a week or I, I really don't know what you would recommend but certainly in the in the onset of this especially if we're dealing with a, a new server or new email um, to keep an eye on that a closer eye on that for a while would probably be a good thing you know, there, there's the thing, the monthly the monthly updates is a great sort of uh, uh, reason I take a look at, I'm, I'm in and I dial in and look, generally at the server level, not at the desktop level, but I look at things and I make sure the servers are, are patched and, and that's when I kind of, I poke and look and um, there's all sorts of stuff that happens in the background, sort of your your backup systems and, and you have probably have virtualization going on uh, and it's probably, if it's done well, it's it's virtualized and exported off-site so that in case for disaster recovery. Um, what I want to do is I want to work for you guys and I want to advise you. Um, would be really helpful is I like having to work with one person that understands the business risk so that your IT guy who understands what the system is doing. I want to explain to you what the, the business risk element of it is so that you can make an informed decision. And I find a lot of clients want to abdicate that because, oh dear God, who wants to talk to the IT guy about <laughs> virtualization? Um, but it, what it really gets down to is like, well, if you lose your server when there's another flood, um, you know, uh, how much hardship is that going to put in? So that's, I, I try to translate that into, into, into real-time uh, ways of evaluating that. But I really want somebody to, to step up and be that on-site person that I can have those discussions with. Is that typically the clerk? Uh, <laughs> it is, unless the clerk runs like hell. Uh, I, you know, it, 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 really, it really gets down to people's tolerance and, and interest. And I try to find the person in the, in, in the organization that can be the best set of eyes for me because m the best value for you guys and for me is to have somebody on site that can translate into uh, somebody screaming, it doesn't work, to getting a little more detail than that and then having some understanding of, of what I'm talking back at. So it's, um, I'm, I'm not tagging your it, but uh, it, you would be the ideal candidate. <laughs> That, I mean, that works for me, and so I also have another uh, system here for recording land records that you guys might know. No, I know. Uh, the, uh, it's not Co-File or whatever. It's there. Avenue. It's Avenue. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, but it's it, that's a fully managed service, and, right. and, and they, they're, uh, they're their own challenges, but, they're, uh, but, but they get it done. Every once in a while, there might be some interaction provider they want to update the, the equipment. Yeah, no, no, and, and, and that's good, and that's where I'll, I'll, get, I'll get involved with them and just say, because a lot of times these guys are out of state, and, yep. and, and they, it would be make it much easier to, oh, an IP needs to be changed, or you know maybe a network card or something. Yep. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay, so in the interest of moving along on yes. the agenda, is that um, what our next, uh, I think our request would be that we, if you're able to provide us some sort of quote, um, I'm not sure, like, I know you said that you told us what your hourly rate is, but maybe the time it would take to yeah, move no, step a, over a, and all a, that. A full proposal yeah. would tell you about the time, and uh, time uh, deliverables, and cost. Great. That uh, would be great. Yeah. Is, does everybody agree with that? And, or have any other questions? Yeah, and I think in the... Yeah, the idea that the, the server project and the email project would be sort of on the side, not... Not on, oh, not yeah, he, on the side, but on the side. Consider those as separate. Yeah, well, I, 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 would, uh, I think we're looking at two things. One, how I much know. would it cost, and then I know ongoing yearly, services ongoing. versus the projects and yeah. stuff. Uh, the project, right. the, the project, did the, the email conversion. Why don't we start there, and then uh, yeah, why don't we start there? I mean, mm -hmm. the time of materials is time of materials, and, and going back and, and again looking at what your previous consultant has spent, and if you felt that was reasonable or not. I mean that those are really great numbers that you have, and they're they're going to reflect what your basic needs are, or I, uh, you know, unless you are really unhappy one way or the other with too much service or too little, which is. Well, I think the I think the two two of the issues with our uh, existing vendor are uh, that their scheme is they give us a contract for so many hours, 
and then they make sure or seem to make sure that they use up those hours and they're always charging us for extra stuff above and beyond. But um, they do give us detailed bills about, you know, what those services are and what they did and how much time, et cetera. And we could certainly, I think, uh, fairly share some of that material with you. Um, sure. But I mean, one of the things that, that, that did concern us is, is we got, and I, I don't want to share the number with you now, but we got a very high estimate for the cost of, of doing the email. And we didn't get a very ex good explanation, I didn't feel, about why it was so high. Now, maybe that is what it is, and maybe you'll come back with, with the same number or, heaven forbid, even more. But uh, we're hoping that isn't the case. Okay, well, I'm not. I'm not clairvoyant, but I. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I'll, I'll come back with a number, and I'll be able to justify it. So, uh, so you know, to, to, uh, on that. Sarah, you had a, one more. Yeah, time. all that is public record. It's in the minutes. Yeah. They're okay. All, they're posted on our website. Yeah. Well, Randy, right. did you have one more thing you wanted? To I was. Say? I was just going to say to that to that point. You know, in the meantime, we could go back through. You know, I'd be happy to to look through our existing agreement with them and try to pull together some sort of idea of what the budgeted hours are and whatnot, just so we had a comparable to. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's what you do is you, yeah. you, you, you translate that. That's and that's a starting thing. And, and the, the, the thing about it is that I'm going to be it's, it's real time with me is if you're get, if we're getting too many hours, you, you pull back the reins and uh, I'll give you pushback. I'll tell you if I think you're it's probably unwise or what have you, but it's uh, you wouldn't be the first community to do that, uh, and we, we go from there. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I can speak for myself in saying that some of that feedback is what I feel is needed to say if there's a question about what we're doing or, or why we're doing something. You know that there is some of that feedback. So uh, you know, hearing hearing you say that is is a welcome. Uh, uh, it's welcomed. So, and I, I, yeah, I, I'm gonna. Uh, I, I, I will explain exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. If I, if I get, I'm not gonna provide substandard service because you you, you, you push back too hard. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna tell you why I think it. Uh, but I, I, I hopefully I can reasonably articulate what I'm doing and why it's necessary. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I've right, taken up a lot of your time. That's okay, thank you. Do, do we don't need a motion for this, do we? No. 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 Yeah. Do you know, is there no. a date where you want this proposal? Do you want it by the second, the second or the 16th? Or I don't, when can you get it to us? Okay. Um, well, be realistic with the whole yeah. yeah. thing. So is, uh, can you tell me what your time frame is? Is, the, is this, I mean, you don't need it before the, the into well, the, so the year. No, no. we don't need a vote before. So the you're end not of trying year. to get it into this no. fiscal year. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, we are trying to get it. Into yeah, this well, fiscal year. Well, we're trying to the next no, year's budget. We're have it done before Christmas. Not Bob. calendar year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. That's we, a, we don't need it during calendar year. But you don't need are, it during calendar year. Oh, that's right, because your fiscal year is July. July one. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I've got worried. I've got, I've got a lot of clients who are like, oh no, it's got to be now. And I'm yeah. Like, um, no, I mean, no. if you could do it by mid-January or oh, yeah. a couple yeah, weeks yeah, in yeah, January, yeah. that'd be great. That's not a problem. Okay. Right. Perfect. And I guess Bob, just one last, one last quick thing. Um, <laughs> we've been told by our um, existing vendor that our uh, server has exceeded its expected reliable life. And I know you've looked at that server. Is that your assessment of that as well? Probably not, but I tend to be a little more frugal. Uh, and and um, I, so servers generally, I would I would assign a, a seven year time frame for, and I think that's what we're at with this one. Yeah. So you're you're right within scope. I've seen people drag them out. I use a lot. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. It depends on the risk. If you have high risk associated with something, then you're going to want to be more attentive to it. Uh, if you've got a good backup system and you've got and you've got a good. Uh, um, uh, redundancy, then that that changes that quotient a little bit, and it, it takes the heat off. It's all about the risk. It's all about business continuity. Okay. Um, Bob, our well, I, I think the answer is sooner rather than later we need to do something about that server. But my sense is we don't need to do it in the next few months. No, I, I wouldn't that say that. Be, I wouldn't say that you're might not. be in our next uh, budget year after July first. 
Our select board meeting is on the, the first uh, and the third, so the second and the sixteenth. If possible, it'd be great to get it the week before, which would be the eight week of the. You eight. want a, you want a week so you can have time to evaluate. Just a, yeah, I mean. <laughs> I, under, I understand. Yeah. Been there. I've, I've been on both sides. Well, and I don't even think we need necessarily it to be a whole. You know, like I'm not going to spend a week looking at it, right? So we're going right. to look at it Just, at the meeting. I mean, even if right? we can, if we can have it on Friday, end, the end of that week, the 12th. on the twelfth. The twelfth. There we yeah. go. One we're nailing it down. That's yeah. good. January twelfth. All righty. Yay. Okay, thank you so much for for coming in and meeting with Dorinda. Thank you, yeah, Bob. Yeah, no, that, my, my pleasure. Appreciate it's it. my business. Yeah. If you have yeah. any questions, just let me know. Okay, I will do that. I have to put down 2024. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. Thank you. Put down 2023. Enjoy Colorado. <laughs> All righty, we are on to a uh, highway report. Um, are you fire department people okay with waiting a few minutes? to hear the highway report because it's 5.30? Sure. Are you sure? Okay. It's kind of one of the same. Isn't it? it is kind of one of the same. <laughs> All righty, so um, update on the town road conditions in the FEMA projects. Is Steve not here today? So you'll... Steve is not. Okay. Steve called me this afternoon. We met with Steve, uh, well, let's see. The last meeting was the 5th, so 6th, 7th. We met on Friday the 8th, and uh, okay. we went over... Uh, all the uh, the projects that are coming up, um, I believe we combined some, and we got down to eleven or ten. Something like that. And uh, Probably we're still left yeah. for next and, year. For next and year. the question now, and I think uh, uh, Steve said today, uh, we talked today, and uh, I think today's the nineteenth, <laughs> and that's when Jerry comes back and. The question is going to be, uh, can we lump all these together into the 2.6 million, or do we have to do them individually? And I would think we'd have to do them individually. Anything over 250. You don't want to go over 250, because the minute you go over 250,000, they audit. Well, you're going to have some audits. Yep. And uh, But that's what I told Steve today. But anyway, so we're... Uh, we're gonna, he's going to keep working, and we're going to try to get those out. He wanted to get them out at the 8th, but I think we're going to be farther into July, like maybe uh, – July, January, excuse me, like that. Maybe the week of the 18th or the next week. And I guess I'm doing okay because Sarah's shaking her head yes. Um, we will talk – Chair, I'm sorry. Do you mind? No, go ahead. I'll be really brief. I did have a conversation with – Emergency management's financial people who yep. gave me strict pointers on how those RFPs should be worded, and uh, that's so, good that we're giving ourselves some time. Okay, so we'll have to have a discussion with yes. Steve before he puts those out. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So that's it for uh, that's about it for the uh, FEMA stuff right now, and. Uh, I mean, Eric can fill you in a little better, but uh, uh, we had some issues with. Did you say 11 roads up here? I said 10 or 11, yes. Yes, it was right around there. Roads I can't or remember. Projects. Projects. projects? projects. Projects. Because some of the projects are multiple roads. Yeah, right. I, we I just don't remember the exact number. And are we, like, um, Sarah, is, like, everything submitted for the existing projects no like what have you submitted well uh so we have been obligated for the debris removal so that has passed washington now the money for that from washington has come to the state of vermont now we're in the state of vermont scrutiny now the vermont emergency management wants to know what what that debris removal consisted of and why it was a certain price so there are there's a whole other level of bureaucracy we're going to go through. But that at least will get paid and she fit. And the person I talked to from Vermont Emergency Management thinks will probably get paid by the end of January if we pass all For the tests. debris removal. Alone. Just the debris removal. But the good news about that is that once we get all that basic foundational paperwork and review in for the debris remo removal, it can be applied to the larger projects. And we have submitted, Dorinda, how much do you think have we submitted for the emergency projects? Well, I haven't. We were at 2 point, 2 point something million um, that we had, but we've added on for this um, safety work. 
and those have not been added to my list yet. I've got to sit down and um, get what is truly a C project and what is a B project straightened out. But it's right at, I want to say, 2.3 maybe, 2.4, something like that. And Jerry, for the FEMA people are reviewing, they're going to that project. They haven't sent that stuff to Washington yet, but they okay. have, they are, they right. are working on it. I'm going to have to meet with Jerry at some point, probably this week. I, he was supposed to come back from vacation, I think, yesterday. He sent an email yesterday. Yeah. Is he your FEMA person? Yeah. Yeah, he's got some questions on some uh, billing that was done. He just wants a narrative for it, so i got to work with him on that. Okay. And just one last thing. They're going to separate, Jerry's going to separate the $250,000 projects and put them aside and then put all the smaller projects and concentrate on getting those done first so that we can get paid for them. Mm -hmm. Once again, we'll go back through Vermont Emergency Management. But the 250000 and above are going to require extra scrutiny. Okay, but are they in the computer system? Did you have those all been... Uh, we, you. Yeah, those are included in that two point. Two, but, okay. Well, good, good on you guys. And also, FEMA just that's a lot of work, you guys. Six month extension on projects. So that's good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you guys, this is like all this extra work that you did not anticipate having as part of your job, and it's like a, probably a part time job. Even a full time. Or a full time <laughs> job. <laughs> so thank you for doing that. Um, okay, roads. How are the roads doing? We're Thank getting you. back. Um, we had um, East Bear Swamp uh, was affected. East Hill was affected. You're uh, talking about last night? Yep. yep. Uh, Lower Sunnybrook was affected. Um, Notch Road was affected. Um, Wood Road was affected. Um, we've worked on them all today. Sunnybrook is back. Um, East Bear Swamp is fixed. Uh, we have to do a little bit more material on Wood Road and some touch-up stuff on East Hill. Were these areas that had been repaired through this FEMA already, some yes. of them? Culver Hill did well. There were no issues on Culver Hill. We had a lot of water yesterday. I couldn't believe, well, my worry was all that snow in the, mm -hmm. over the rocks, and like, was it gonna have ice jams so that the water couldn't, but they, the water seemed to get through. Mm -hmm. yep. um, wow, yeah, geez, okay. Was it icy this morning? No. Did you have sand? No, it was no. warm. It might be a little bit tomorrow. Yeah. It's more slimy than icy. Oh, yeah. But yeah, the might, damage might... was something you were capable of just sort of repairing. Yes. Okay, that's good. We, we have a mud season going on right now uh, yeah. until tomorrow morning. I'm sure we'll be frozen by then. <laughs> Chuckle from the chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, um, anything else on the highway? Any questions for the highway? All righty. So it is. I have a question. Oh, sure. Sorry. Just last time we talked about some equipment repairs and whatnot. How we look in there? Uh, get the parts for them. We just got to have time to put it back together. I'm hoping by the end of the week or beginning of next week. Is that the uh, injector pump? Yep. Yeah, the parts showed up today. Oh, we got the bill. Yep. Oh, I was going to say, I saw the bill. Yeah, I saw it yesterday too. But yes, they showed up. Great. Any other questions for the road crew? All righty. Um, monthly meeting with the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department. Ooh, action possible. Hmm. So Welcome, yeah. Jeff and Scott. And Scott, who are you with? I only see half a head. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, Stephen. Hi, Hi, Stephen. Hello. Thanks for coming. Uh, Hi. Thank you. So we had 10 calls this month. Was going to be eight until last night. Um, two mutual aids out, uh, seven max responders, one minimum, and four for average. The thing on the, with the one minimum, a lot of the um, what we call hazard calls, which are trees on power lines, will only go out, and most tend to be up on my side of the town. So I'll I'll roll. There's no reason to bring any, everybody else out unless we're shutting a road down. Uh, we don't need to bring. The trucks out when the roads are in less than ideal shape if we don't have to uh, so now I've, I've started doing especially for the winter having pov response so privately owned vehicles um, and that's what i'm doing with that category is trees down and if there's an accident or something like we shut down 102 and 100 b right there um, 
all the vehicles are out by the time I could get down from my house. So there's no point in me going to the station. I go right to the scene. <clears throat> but it's just a way to capture how much, you know, we're sending people and it not necessarily <coughs> a piece of equipment is going out and why the, the equipment isn't going out. As far as the runs, um, pickup versus deer, we had a, and I'm highlighting the second call, the body recovery. That's one thing that firefighters aren't necessarily trained to do, but it's one of the things we're called on. Uh, someone had died in the early hours up in the boonies in Moortown, but our coverage area <clears throat> and our folks went and had to, to bring the body down to where uh, the mortician could get to them. So this is, I want you to understand some of the stuff that we do as part of the fire department in serving the community. It's, it's uh, not all easy stuff. Um, there's some hard stuff that we deal with, but I just want you all to understand that. Um, <clears throat> we did have a, a tree limb catch on the hotline, come down and contact the fiber line and burned about 15 feet of fiber on, along East Hill. It took two and a half days to get replaced. It took Green Mountain Power uh, about eight hours to get a, a truck up there to take the the tree limb off the power line. The power didn't stop. I mean, we didn't lose our power because of it, but uh, they couldn't work on the burning line until Green Mountain Power got there to take the limb off. A um, little bit of a frustration period during that time. Um, more trees down. We had to close Route 12. I think that was for about three hours uh, because a, a tree came down, took some lines down, across, hung up on lines and across the road. For a while, Green Mountain Power was letting um, vehicles under one side of the road until their trucks got there, and then we shut it down for three hours for them to cut the tree out of the, the line and get it off and string new lines, and um, that was a fun morning. That was one of the cars they left over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did have a vehicle rollover, and um, we did use engine one to help clean out uh, with the road department uh, culvert on Bulldog. So the, um, the jointness of the road department and the highway and the fire department, um, we have the capability on the truck. It's a need for the town. So we, uh, that's another thing that normally firefighters don't do, but that's one of the things we're picking up and doing. Uh, and then last night was um, closing down because Route 2 flooded over here. Um, as far as training goes, we're doing our uh, biennial CPR training. Um, we did uh, work night last week, so we're not doing it day after Christmas, and station and vehicle cleanup. Um, yesterday, and I don't know whether it was from yesterday's calls or what, but it looks like we may have lost a, a rear tire on engine one. Um, I got a picture this morning that it's right, looks to be right on the edge. So it probably can't be repaired. Um, so we'll have a new tire to be looking at. Um, we did, um, uh, Tanker One has some chassis electrical issues, which is different from the fireside electrical issues. So we've got to get that in and get worked on. Fortunately, the person that came looking for the problem, who used to work for VTech, in addition to checking the fire side, you check all the grounding, and all the grounds look good. So it's not a ground issue. It may be something as simple as a um, um, oh, what's the, relay. The, the relay in the relay box. The box is sealed, but the relay's been making noises. So it may be something as simple as that. So we just have to get it in. Uh, we did move equipment over to the new rescue, um, and. We'll probably wait until <laughs> the roads get a little bit better to try to figure out what we're gonna, when we're gonna try to sell it. Now it's not the optimum time for, for dealing with that. Um, we do have it in station two right now. Uh, as far as fast squad, we had uh, nine total calls and uh, seven medical only calls. So that's the last report for the current calendar year. Any questions? Thank your team for the body recovery. That sounds like it was probably a difficult thing for some of them. 
yeah, it's not a it's not a fun thing. No. Especially cool. in conditions when you're going through knee deep snow. Yeah. Any questions for the fire department? No? No, thank I have no questions. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you for joining us at the um, station, you guys, down there. Thanks for your service <coughs> to the town. We really appreciate no, it. Happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays to you guys, too. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. Um, I did have a, I realized I had a road question, Eric, that I wanted to ask. Who, who's in charge of um, Horn of the Moon Road? Is that East Montpelier or us? Uh, it depends on what side. We like, do over the bridge. You do over, over the, bridge? the dam. But we go over the dam. You go over the dam. We turn around on the other side. Uh, but that's what I thought. You yep. don't do up like towards Ananda Gardens nope. and all that. Yeah, nope. okay. As soon as you get on the other side, we turn around. Actually, a small portion of that's Montpelier, and then it goes East Montpelier. Oh, my gosh, really? Yeah. That's crazy. Do they yeah, contract one of you guys out to do no, it? No, it's so small that it's it's just a small. Oh, portion. nobody. you got to take care of it to get turned around. Well, yeah, you're not. Yeah, I see. You can't yeah, turn so around prior to it. it. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all right. Yep. Um, my husband and I were having a disagreement. That's all why I'm asking. He was sure that it was Middlesex. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's East Montpelier that does that section up there, but I didn't oh, know about the bridge. Oh, I was going to Thanks. Okay, so um, let's see. Where are we? We are at, ooh, the fiscal year 2025 wow, budget workshop. Presentation of budgets for the town office offices and listers. Discussion about the fiscal year 25 budget. Budget committee likely to attend. We're That's here. you, George. Yeah. And is well, that? We've got oh, and there's Mark Elias and Elias. And oh, here. well, welcome. And is Lee also and, a part and of it? And Zara's there as well. And Zara. Okay, and Zara. Do you have a printout? Zara is under I Lee. Do. Is there under Lee Pollen? What's that? No, Zara. Uh, she's the fourth one down. Anybody else need a? Nope. I don't see a fourth one down. You don't see the Z? Thanks. Oh my God, am I like yeah. crazy? On no. The oh, okay, I'm looking at the pictures. <laughs> I'm, and I'm like, I do not see a picture of a Zara anywhere. Okay. Uh, I'm, yeah. Yes, and I'm sorry, I'm kicked back, relaxing with a heating pad in bed. Sorry, Liz, I will meet you in person someday. Okay, that's all right. I just was like really looking at the screen thinking I'm like, I'm missing something there. Okay, welcome. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so what do we have here to look at? So I emailed out um, to the select board and I the budget committee a copy of what I had put together by Sunday oh, okay. afternoon. Um, I came in today and I made some small changes. So what you got Sunday is a little bit different than what if anybody's looking at this one here. Um, things that were highlighted are things that either will fluctuate based on when you work on the uh, wages. Mm -hmm. um, so that will take care of anything to do with wages and payroll taxes, health and uh, not health insurance, but uh, retirement, all of that. So those are all subject to change. Mm -hmm. um, and we can go down through the list of the highlighted items, which I didn't know. I put placeholders in there just so we could come up with something, but I didn't know what our intentions were. Um, the first one being last year we allocated $20,000 for a new server. Um, and this year, uh, you know, so I put the placeholder in there for that. Um, let's see what that's equipment was. purchase 45. Yeah, let's see. Wait a minute. I'm lost here already. Um, I had it highlighted. You said, highlighted. Oh, I went down. Okay, I skipped over a bunch first. Let me go back to. Could, um, wait, I'm sorry, could you refresh my memory of what you said, why some of them are highlighted and some are? Because they're subject to change. Oh, okay. Either we're going to talk about them or they'll change automatically based gotcha. on. Um, what you decide. The first thing was line 30, if that's or 29, the flood recovery debt. Mm -hmm. That's something that I put two lines in there, one for the principal, one for interest, um, just because I think we need to plan on actually paying back some interest. So, and I just put in this $20,000 number or $30,000 number. Um, and so 
and that's next in the discussion for the Treasury report about talking about what we're going to do with the bond bank and all. So, um, so that one really is subject to change, I think. Um, and uh, at this point, I don't think we're going to have to pay back any principal. If we go with the bond bank, we don't have to pay principal for two years. Um, but we will have to, if we get money from the bond bank, that's automatically got to go to pay down the line of credit with the bank. Um, so I left the principal part zero, but it, we may end up with something there. I don't know. But we know we're going to have to pay something in interest no matter what. Absolutely. We're going to have an interest right. payment. Um, no doubt about it. The other one I've highlighted just below that is tax abatements. I know we did the three tax abatements that, that will fall into this year, which were unbudgeted. I don't know if, I mean, the buyouts should not affect us at all, but I don't know if we will see anything come forward in 2025, whether or not we should be putting something in that number, in that position or not. You mean because they're going through buyouts and therefore and no, that won't have happened? No, we had the three people that came in and asked for their property taxes yeah. to be abated. You know, I don't know if anybody else will come forward next year and ask for their property right. tax to be abated. Well, like, I'm just wondering if you're going through a process, how many houses are um, 15. Yeah, so if, if I were one of those 15 houses and I'm not living in it and it takes two years or who knows how long it takes for FEMA to actually go through the process, I might come and abate my taxes. Right. Um, their house will certainly be appraised differently than it was this year. You know, like right. if their house got de destroyed, it'll be appraised for a lot less, I'm assuming. But it's still something. But it's still something. Right. Right. So I highlighted I that. I that we, that we come up with some kind I of think a, a number. plus number for that. I mean, it's totally unknown, but it does seem to me likely that we're going to have some additional activity in that area. I can't imagine we won't. Well, even if we just, even if we took the number that we used this year, whatever that went through and used some form of that number. Right. Mm -hmm. um, assuming that there's going to be more activity there. What do you budget people think? I don't know what the right, I don't know what the right number is. If it should be 5,000, 6,000, I don't think. I was thinking there. like 20,000. Oh, we like did, two per. We I didn't, we had nothing near that this year. I mean, no, we only did a few thousand, I think. I think or we, were, 5, we were somewhere around that 5,000. 5,000, right? That, that five to seven. But that was only two people. Three people, right? Three people. Well, Three people. one week, two. Uh, two people that actually received any of the. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Can I just make a comment on the appraised value of the properties? Yes. Um, there are definitely some properties that are ruined, but there are definitely some properties, the majority of them have been vastly improved. What do you mean? Right, um, but those folks probably won't be seeking abatements if they... They will not be back. seeking right, abatements. Right. So almost all the properties that have been uh, flooded have been repaired and have, have been improved. Right. So I'm not... And they're still in the buyout. They're still in the buyout section. And they're getting money for their house. It's not like they're getting nothing. Their house we isn't valued. We did nothing. have a house sale on on the, a flooded house that sold for $100,000 more than its tax appraised value last week. So it's not necessarily, so, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think So maybe we don't. 30000 I would, I would suggest that we, we run 10, somewhere in the realm of five to $7,000 for that. That's right. What do you folks think? I would agree, Randy. I just, I just don't, thinking about the methodology we used on those uh, on those appeals we had this year, um, you know, in most cases, the land isn't destroyed, you're going to be taxed on the land. <coughs> Many of those houses have been repaired. I, I, it's a total guess, whatever it is, but I don't think it's going to be a big number. And they're living in them. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's different. Yeah, I'd agree. It's guesswork. It's guesswork. Let's just put in 7,000 for now as a placekeeper. 7,000. Everyone okay with that? 7,000 as a placekeeper? 
Yeah. It's easier to come down than it is to go up. Yeah, when we start cutting back, <laughs> we know where we'll take it out of. So right. under administration, you can skip all the way down to the new server, the equipment oh. purchase. Again, we plugged in $20,000 for the current year. We certainly, <gasps> I don't know if we're going to spend that $20,000 before year end. Um, so that goes to the bottom line. Um, so do we plug something in again for next year? Where are you, Dorinda? Down on line 45. 45. You have 20,000 there, please. 20,000. Yeah, because yeah. I think the, the proposal was just under 20. I think it was like 18 and change or something yeah. like that. Let's leave right. it for now. Leave it for now. Yeah, because we don't even know what he's going to yeah. give us as yep. a quote. Okay. There's no point in really and spending we'll too keep much time on going. That. Um, let's see. The Lister's Nemrec Assessor Contract. Ooh. So this is the reappraisal um, that will be done that we have to start paying them in July of 2025. We have to start paying them, uh, let's see. Uh, 5000 Well, it comes out to, when all is said and done in two years, the total is going to be $105,000. So. Over two years. Over two years. So it's, um, yeah, it's under 5000 It's 4000 and something a month we're supposed to start paying them. However, we already have $52,000 in the appraisal fund. So if you took that all out, the balance would be $53,000. I divided that by two years and came up with $26,500. That sounds good. Yeah. And then by the time the 26th fiscal year comes around. We might have more money in the appraisal fund. So well. we could lower it then. May I ask a question about the when does that start? The when do the payments start, Dorinda? July of 25. So that affects, I mean 24. Okay, that's what I was. I'm sorry. About. 24. It's for FY 25. Right. Yeah. Oh, July of 24. 24. Oh, starts. okay. So yeah. it goes into the July the, the So wait, do we actually budget. have enough? Then Yeah, that 26.5 yeah. would carry you through the first year. Ah, yeah. Gotcha. And then we would save the next. Yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's how I came up with that number. Um, line 56, computer maintenance. Uh, again, I just took a placeholder of what we budgeted for the current year and plugged in $22,000. Um, so. Does that, uh, is there a line item anywhere else that would capture that email migration or anything like that so that that twenty two thousand dollars isn't capturing that seventeen thousand no it would proposal. not it would not cover that seventeen thousand dollar so that's just our normal monthly that was our normal for a computer and also like our memory contract like and things tired. like that that we pay for yeah so i mean the reality is that could be closer to forty thousand dollars if you use the proposal that we had for the email migration and everything else underneath that same line item. Yeah. Question, is the server on your um, capital budget? Uh, I think uh, it is. I thought it was, but it wasn't in the proposal. Um, Mark, uh, the server for the CIP, that wasn't within the uh, proposal that was circulated to the select board for this year, right? So it's not. He said no. It's not uh, captured in that. Okay. So we need to budget it, but budget for it somewhere. Right, and I guess my question is: in our big giant budget, and we ha don't we have a capital spending plan section? Yes, we do. And is server on that? Well, let me look. Um, Mark's got his hand up. Yes, Mark. Mark. So going forward, we need to add that to the capital asset inventory. Because again, it's more than five thousand dollars and has a useful life of, you know, three, four, or five years. So okay, yeah. we're talking about that. Yes. It is in there. Yeah. We should okay. put it here. Yeah. 
underneath that line yep. item 265. Gotcha. So on Dorinda's paper here, at the very end, on line 265, that's where the capital, the CIP funding is for equipment, computer purchases, and upgrades. So that's where, like, a server or I think the, the email, fancy, migration email migration is, is different, I believe. Because it's not a physical yeah. thing. And it's, well, and it's a one-time thing. It's a one-time one -time thing once yeah. they make the change. Okay. So I don't think that should be here. This is a reoccurring, potentially. Okay. I mean, once you move cloud-based, it won't be, but. Okay. So that would fall under computer maintenance. Right. Right. Yeah. So that would be under the main. And we don't know how much that's going to be, but we're saying to date we've spent seventeen nine, we budgeted twenty two, and that doesn't include that. No, that seventeen include... nine is what we spent last. year. Oh, what year. you spent last year. Right. Right. Um, right. Okay. There's no number for where we're at right now. Okay. But um, the way that was estimated was what we pay for support um, for RB and. We also put in Nemric okay. um, contract. I think that's $5,000. I mean, you could make that $40,000 yeah. and include that email migration. Yeah. So we could also just wait, and or we could plug in 40 and change it when we get our so friend box. I would quote. plug it. Plug, yeah. plug 40. it, and then we can change it if, you okay. know, because we don't even know if, if that's a path we're going right. to move forward right. with at this point. Uh, so... Okay, cool. We're getting some big bucks in our budget, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, and the next... Spoken like, a, spoken like a loyal taxpayer. Yeah. <laughs> and the listers asked me to add in 100 hours of support at $150 an hour if they need extra help from NEMRIC. Mm -hmm. um, that, I don't know if... Uh, we do have a contract. The way it works with Nemric is if you call them up and you need support on something, they usually give you 10 to 15 minutes without charging you for it. And then after that, they start charging you. Yeah. Um, but you could call them 10 times a day and get 10 to 15 minutes 10 times a day. And But um, so I, I don't know. That, that's what they ask. The 30 comes out to 200. I have 100, 15 here. 150. Oh, I think she changed it. Oh, I see. I see 30. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, we changed it down to 15,000. Okay. Because so today I talked to them about it. They originally asked for 200 hours, and I said that's a little high, and so they brought it down to 100. Okay, good. All right. So 15. And I think that's even yeah, uh, kind of high. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's see. I don't know why I highlighted. Oh, I think I highlighted building repairs just because I don't know what we're going to do here. Um, mm -hmm. If we need to put in anything more there or I just level funded it that for sounds now. That's good, yep. Well, because we also have, don't we have in the CIP that we put money aside for the fund. town hall? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I think that makes sense. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Again, public safety, you can skip <coughs> over everything. Um, line number 75, the ambulance. Um, we don't have a new number, so I level funded that at 75. Um, it was, it ended in 23 at 72702, so... There's a little bit of inflation there. Um, so that's how I did that one. Uh, property and casualty insurances and workers' comp, I just got new rates, um, so those may get adjusted. Um, but it's not a huge difference from what's plugged in there. But going forward, I'll work on it over the next week and get that updated. Um, Road gravel, I highlighted that. Um, road crew suggested 50,000. Um, and I think I just put that in there because we talked about what was left in this year's budget plus that. So that would bring it in at $80,000. And um, so I just kind of highlighted that one. Um, 
line number 131, we did have trucking expense last year. I believe we're going to have trucking expense for this year, but yet no number was budgeted for that. It, if it should be close to the same because that's what we're going to... Uh... Well, there wasn't anything budgeted. <coughs> Nothing has ever been budgeted for trucking. Hmm. So... Um, so are they, are the costs for the trucking figured in? Like, so I'm thinking of like the, the sand and the winter sand and things like that. Um, are those typically isolated to the line items themselves to include the trucking or materials? So like salt, would it be in that same line item? So salt now is uh, included right in the, the price of salt. The, the cost the of, price. The cost of trucking price. is buried in that. Okay. Is that trucking is not for us moving the excavator or something like no. that, is it? No. That comes under a different line item? I mean, it's only $1,900. That's what we spent last year. So that's why I'm thinking it's not the trucking of gravel and stuff like that, I don't think. It does seem like, you know, with it being under summer maintenance, that seems like that might be just for, you know, moving equipment. That's what I think, too, because wouldn't the cost of gravel and stuff include the trucking charge? But, Eric, well, you know, uh, I guess nah. the big question for me is, you know, we just we just bought that uh, trailer right. that would allow the town to road stop. crew to move its own equipment, so we may not, you know, Eric may not be budgeting that, given the fact that we yeah. just bought that trailer. Yeah, it's never been budgeted, but I just highlighted it because we did have an expense last year for it, okay. so... Um, I'll leave it at zero, and you might want to ask Eric about it or okay. talk to him. See what it's, what it's actually for. <laughs> uh, I think you got it. Let's see. We can skip down to. Uh, we can skip all the way through that. Um, okay, down to recreation. Um, a, the only thing, if you go down to the recreation, um, down and starts at two t line 222, the only thing I did was highlight the Wrightsville beach dues because, again, we don't have a new number, but I wouldn't anticipate that would change very much. Wait, he has, has he given us this recreation budget? He did give us the yeah, recreation budget, okay. and, but he wouldn't have the new He due, wouldn't have had right? it, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's the only change there other than the other numbers in that category will update. Uh, down under the Planning Commission, they did not, they gave me a budget, but they did not include any future grant match. Um, I don't know if that was an oversight or if that was something, you know, if they don't plan af going after any grants or... But, hmm. So I highlighted that one. Maybe we should get if clarity be, on that. If it's because they didn't actually spend anything, they budgeted for... Budgeted for 2022 20, 23 and spent nothing. Yeah. And we budgeted again in 23 24 yeah. Maybe they I, don't... I knock it out. If it, if it pops up, it pops up. Okay, leave it at zero. I haven't spent any the last two years. But okay. well, we don't know if we spent any this year yet. Well, yeah. We haven't spent anything that I'm aware of yet. Oh, okay. What so. did you say, Elias? I think Sandy said they weren't planning on going for grants in her email when she submitted her budget. Yeah, I oh, think okay. that's what she said. I just didn't know if... Yeah. Okay. So, I'm wiping out the window. Okay. I'll change it to white. Um... And let's see, that brings us down to the CIP, which the Budget Committee can talk about. Okay, so it's, it's pretty much the same as last year's request. The only difference is there's an additional 30,000 in the Town Hall Building Fund for elevator repairs, which was in the asset inventory. So that's the difference. Last year, I think it was 106,000. This year, it's 136,000. And that's really for elevator repairs. 
And uh, Mark, I also added in the twenty thousand dollar based on our conversation here in the meeting tonight about the uh, server upgrade. So that's uh, two sixty five. Two sixty five. Yeah. All right, so now we're at a $50,000 increase. So isn't the elevator situation all wrapped up with what we do about the town hall? Theoretically, uh, you know, I, I reached out to Mark this morning um, and, you know, if this doesn't, if the town hall plan doesn't move forward, if the voters don't move this forward, we still need to do something with that, that elevator. Um, so I had asked to keep that in uh, the request in the CIP, um, understanding that if the, if the town voters approved any kind of renovation or work here, um, that essentially that money uh, set aside in that town hall building fund could be accessed for that renovation. Um, and if, if they don't right. move forward with the uh, renovation, we still have to do something with the elevator. So that, that was my, my reasoning okay. behind that. Well, that makes sense to me. Thank you. It's in this 40,000. Oh, it's in the 40,000. Yeah, so okay. originally that's 10,000 every year, but we had planted that uh, 30,000 for the elevator shaft in that building okay. fund. Okay, yep, got it. So that brings us to, if we, with that, the changes we made, and it's gonna change a little bit still, but that brings us to a 12.72% increase. Out. Woohoo! Just kidding. Well, it's better than the 21% we were faced with last year before we started cutting, so. That's right. <clears throat> but I do think we have some numbers that we need to address, especially relating to the flood. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I just wanted we changed to say. Them as we were talking. I just want to say. Oh, go ahead, sorry. So it goes to 12%? Yeah, you added 30,000 in one place and okay. you added, yeah. 12, what is it? Right now, it's 12.72. How does that compare to last year's increase? Well, last year, it's like Mark said, I think we originally came in at, um, we came in at like a 20% and we cut it back and ended up somewhere around, I think it was 11, wasn't it? So it was ten and a quarter. It was ten and a quarter before special articles, twelve and a half after special articles. So, right. And don't That's forget, you moved, you moved that um, fifty thousand dollars from a special article into the line items this year. Correct. So that's taking it from pot B and putting yeah, it into pot A. Good point. Good yeah. Point from below the line to above the line. That's yeah. right. So the wages for the road crew is a different percentage increase than the wages for the select board. No, I'm not that's select board. not correct. The, um, I don't see that. I see four percent all the way. It's four percent. Everybody gets a four percent. Okay. What is it? What does it say about three percent here on the wages? Where? What is this under line one seventy two? One seventy two. It says three percent as opposed to Well that's just how it calculated out. It just you know, there might have been a Oh, because somebody in, might not be there or whatever. Right. But they are okay, so they are everybody's these look at like four percent. Okay. Yeah. That was a number I just because that's what you used last year, so I just left it as the same. Okay. But if you go uh, into well, if you but I think um, what oh, she's saying here. is okay. You're still over here. I went into the, the if you go into the salary tab and it shows um, it. Okay, it's That's everybody's right. as long as four percent. Okay, all right. I just That's wanted to make here. sure. All right. Okay. Um, and you guys don't forget too that like if there's something here where we're like oh, you know. I'm thinking elevator. 
for example, um, you know, we could maybe say maybe some of our ARPA funds could go towards that. And I know that, what? <laughs> What'd you say? We haven't spent them all. Have we? We've talked about spending them. We, we haven't. We have used it to cover our flood possible. expenses, but we have not allocated it to the flood expenses. But oh, we, we spent it all? We've used it to cover cash we've flow. We've just used it for cash flow. Oh, and cash there's flow. not a problem with that? Not as long as it's back in the budget by the okay, end of the year. Okay, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it was, it is on a flood board salary. It is an allowable use of those. So, okay. yes, and they did pass something this year that we can use it for that, for the flood okay. recovery. If we had to. Um, if we had to. The thing that I'm thinking that we should just claim it and then use it as we see fit, mm -hmm. you know, and because one way or the other, either it's going to flood, it's going to special services for the town. Yep. And no matter what we decide to use it for, whether we're going to fix the elevator or we're going to cover the flood, it's all special services. Right. So we could do the final fi filing in March and just use that general, generalized category. Yeah. And, and, then, and then anything that you were looking to right. fund with that money would essentially just come out of the general yeah. fund. Yeah. So Mark, you had a comment. So two Two questions for Dorinda. Dorinda, you mentioned um, a little while ago that there were still budget updates to be made because of the flooding. Do you know specifically outside of the the number, the exact number for interest on the on the loan we have? What other items we have other than what you folks were just discussing about, let's say, reallocating money to flooding? But I wasn't sure whether there was any any other shoe to drop in next year's budget due to the flooding? Well, we've spent over two million in the flood invoices, but I've only drawn down a million and a half on the line of credit. Okay. So the two don't equate, you know, it's like, and the difference between, um, you know, what I've got in my spreadsheet and what I now have to go back and capture probably can't be, what do you think those all seasons invoices were for, there was a couple of them there, for East Hill and Center Road, do you recall? No. no. The, it, it's probably not more than maybe, I want to say 150000 or something. You were not talking a ton of money. Uh-huh. Um, but the, what we're going to be paying an interest on is that 1.5 million. Okay. Um, and so the other question is, do you have an idea of when you think you have a revised budget out? Because from a budget committee perspective, I think we'd like to meet and look at the budget prior to the first select board meeting in January so we can come prepared for an informed discussion on where we want to try to make cuts. Um, it, it's going to be minor changes. The biggest thing you guys need to decide is what the wages are going to be, what the percentage okay. increase is going to be, because that affects a lot of, lot of those highlighted numbers. Because it affects retirement, it affects the actual wages, it affects um, workers' comp, all that stuff. Are there any pieces yeah, of that? Effect. Are, yeah. are there any pieces of that that we're still waiting on? Like the workman's comp and the insurance. I and just all that. got those this afternoon. Okay. So, so this, the rate per hundred. Yeah, it's so all it is is a rate per hundred. This isn't reflective of the actuals for what it's, you got. It's but you're talking minimal. One it's is a one huge. point okay. one is a one percent increase. Another one I mean, they're really that's not the biggest impact to the budget is changing those um, insurance coverages. So what I would suggest what I would suggest is Let's leave the payroll number at the 4% right now, and that's certainly something we're going to take a look at when we get to looking at the overall budget. And I realize it affects all those different line items, but I think, uh, I think for the time being, we leave it at 4%. Okay. 
And it's something we all need to think about, whether uh, I'm sure some people probably think it isn't enough. Some people think it's too much. Um, you know, it's the same thing we deal with almost every year. I just want to make sure, I just want to make sure having worked hard to try and get our overall staff, road crew and everyone else to what we thought was a reasonable and fair compensation. Uh, I don't want to start backsliding on that. I want to make sure we keep up. Well, I think having the numbers in front of us allow us to, you know, look at some different scenarios and, uh, you know, inform, you know, our opinions for, for diving into that. Right. I agree, Randy, 100%. I just, I just think we usually, all, and I know it seems a little upside and backwards, but we usually through the years have always put in a plug number and then we adjust it up or down as we get to, when we get to finalizing the budget. So. All righty. Good starting spot. And uh, health care numbers and all that are, That's it, are yeah. in here? Okay. Yeah. So the health care is accurate. It's only um, the only thing that has changed is the workers comp rate a little bit and property and casualty. So those are the only ones that numbers that are going to change and it's not going to be a significant change at okay. all. But and I can get them this plugged is slightly in. slightly different from what you have. Yeah, there, so. I, right. Yeah. Well, we added that was all done today when I got the Lister's yeah. budget. And yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I'm like half a percent different from, okay. from the paper. Okay. So. Yeah. All righty. So any further questions for the budget committee? Um, about the budget for the town office and the listers. Thank you, Dorinda, for doing that. Um, all righty, so the treasurer's report, considering applying for a flood loan at 1.3% interest from the Vermont Bond Bank to cover road repair expenses not re reimbursed by FEMA, action likely. Did people get a chance to watch that video that Dorinda sent around? Yeah, I attended. Um when the session went nice. through. Nice. Okay, good. So yeah. I was able to I was able to see that. Yep. Thanks, George. Thanks, Thanks George. Thanks yeah, for coming. George. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. So is there discussion about it? Dorinda, do you have any further sort of thoughts on this or well, um which if you've all listened to it, you know what the parameters are of doing it. It's a very tight schedule to get it submitted. Um, although there's not a ton of requirements, um, they need three years of uh, an audit, they need uh, of financial statements, they need the FEMA project worksheets, they need a uh, legal opinion, and from what I read, the legal opinion can only come from their approved list of councils, and our list of council is not on this. Um, so, and this all has to be in by the 9th, I think. Yes. Um, there's only $15 million available. Um, so it's going to be, you know, um, we may not get everything we ask for. Right. We only go to the well once, so it's for right now. So it would be a matter of covering what invoices we have yep. currently and then we would have to pay off the bank um, if we got this loan. And every payment we get from FEMA has to pay down their loan. Yep. So it's not like we have you know, money to work with. So it's when only we, for incurred expenses. Yeah, oh, that's yep. it, current yep. expenses. Yep. Yep. So any of the future work or bid work you know, I know I made comments about, oh, that'd be great if we could include all of that. It's, no, it's not allowable. Can't. Right. So let's say they give us a million dollars only because there's a lot of towns asking for money. I think they're going to give us more because I think we're one of the heavy hitter towns. But let's just say they give us a million dollars. So that million dollars would go towards paying down the um, community bank uh, loan. Community National? Community Bank. Yeah. Community Bank. A million and a yeah. half. It's a swing in the interest rate. It, the way the way I see it, it's this. There's obviously work involved in doing this, time and work involved in doing it, and we've got to decide whether it's even possible to do that. Hopefully, it is. I can't believe 
with all the municipal work that Rob Halpert does. He isn't on that list. I don't understand why that is the case, but who knows? Um, but anyway, um, it's really the swing in the interest rate minus the extra expense and time of doing it. And we've just got to look at that and say, is it worth trying to do it or not? And is it feasible for us to do it or not? Do it or not. But, but let me just finish my, my thought that I had. So if it's only a million dollars, but we owe a million and a half, can we still hold that million, that half a million? We don't have to pay it all off at once. No, you would not have, but we do have to pay it all off. It, this is only a one year loan. Right. So I took it out in October, so I would have to pay the principal in October. Okay. And are they, did they say that they would give us so if we've taken out a million and we've no, but we spent two point six million. Mm -hmm. if that's so where I use the FEMA the money, fund balance, and everything else I gotcha. could get my hands on. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so if we asked for two point six million and we got it, half one and a half would pay off the community bank. The other we could actually keep to pay back ourselves. Well, yes, yeah, so we would have, again, you would pay interest on yeah. whatever they give you. And then you have to start paying off the principal, and you do have um, seven years to pay the mm. whole thing off, five years to pay on the principal. So you would have to, you know, whatever you end up with at the end. And then presumably when you get the FEMA money, you yeah, you that. have no choice. You have if you get that. any FEMA money, it has to go to them. Right. So would you say to them, I'm sorry, I'm just a, I'm getting The bond bank. The bond bank. It goes to the bond bank. It goes to the it bond bank. It goes to the bond bank before it goes to community bank. The line of no, no, no. If we took out a bond, yeah. we have to take that money and pay off community bank. Okay. So then the only people we hold a loan with it would be the bond okay. bank. Okay. But theoretically, I guess the question is that theoretically, if there's a million and a half on the line of credit, and they only gave us a million, so there's a half a million dollars. There's a half a million dollars we would have to pay off in October. Right. And hopefully because by then we would have gotten some FEMA money. Because that's the whole point. Or right. we have to redo. Or we have to redo the loan. Right. And and Community Bank has has said yes that they would. Uh, absolutely look at an extension of that if we needed it, right? Yes, they did. Um, now, I don't know if, and I'm sure it doesn't matter to them, that I don't know if we can carry both loans or, you know, that would be a question I'd have to find out whether we can carry one with the bond bank and one with them for the same thing. I think you probably it's can because it's not the same thing. Yeah, You're only covering so much if of it. If they're not fully funding what we've pulled yeah. down, right. that's, then that's I would where assume we're that was, So we'd yeah. be carrying the difference of what they've right. what they've allowed us to pull out right. of community bank. That's right, Greg. Yeah. yeah, I am all for this because when we're talking millions of dollars, interest rates matter. Oh, absolutely, hugely. And, you know, it's a double. It's double the interest. Mm -hmm. rate. I just need clarification because it's hard. Yeah. To try to follow along. <laughs> So you get the if you get a million and a half from the from the bond bank, right? The 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 town is supposed to apply that to the community bank loan line yes. of credit. But when we get FEMA money, we pay back the bond bank first and then community. We've already paid off community. We've if already we got paid it. off. Community. If we get the full million and if a we half, get the whole, we've paid off. Uh, the the complicated situation get, comes in if we don't get the full amount right. that we've drawn on the line of credit. Right. Then that, that's the I'm way that we interpret the language is that any FEMA payments go to the bond bank and we're still on the hook for the remaining portion okay. of the community bank. Okay. Right. So the bond bank is right. priority. Yeah, yeah it sounds much. like okay. it. We the, other thing, the other thing, guys, excuse me, the other thing we need to think about is that we get, you know, we basically have a one-year line of credit with the bank. Uh, this loan, whatever we get this loan for, we have, what, seven years to pay it off, Dorinda? Yes. So, I mean, we're going to pay interest, but we're going to pay very low interest, and we have seven years to pay it off, which, you know, hopefully in that time we can, we can absorb that. We should be able to, especially after we get all the FEMA money. I just think, I just think, if we can do it, if we can't do it, if it's unfeasible for us to make the submission, then we should 
forget about it and get on with our lives. But if it's possible to do it without completely frazzling our accounting department, I think we should pursue it. How do you feel about it, Dorinda? Well, uh, so the three years of financial statements is a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. The FEMA project worksheets, I think we can just take what we've submitted so far to Jerry, correct, Sarah? I, uh, my suggestion is that we just submit the, yeah, we just submit what we've What, what we've our worksheet is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that one's a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, Non-FEMA cost documentation. I don't think there is any non-FEMA cost documentation. Oh, right. yeah. So I don't think that. Yep. the big one is a preliminary legal opinion. Um, and these all have to be uploaded with the application, which the application really is a looks to be a very simple form to fill out. Um, the biggest hurdle that I can see, is, there's a couple questions. Um, that you have to fill out with a disaster impact ratio, and maybe somebody else can help me with it to make sure I'm trying to oh, fill that all out right. Yeah. Um, but the big thing is this legal opinion. And what, is the, what is the legal opinion on, Dorinda? It is what that. What is your opinion on? This is every city. Peter, that's like the classic thing that we have for all the for every, for every time we take out a, a loan, isn't it? That we have a legal opinion that's almost like a boilerplate. The local bond council serves as a critical role in confirming the legality of our borrower's debt in, insure insurance insurance whatever. <laughs> Early engagement of local council will ensure that they will be able to provide a preliminary legal opinion alongside a loan application to the bond bank. The below that list of... Be, that, that should be relatively a no-brainer. It's built in into the application. I mean, not a no-brainer for us, but a no-brainer for the attorney. I mean, all they're saying is that we have the legal authority to borrow the money, which is what yeah. I thought it was. So right. this does say that the list below are the banks we currently work with. If you are a firm working in Vermont and wish to apply to be added to the list, then I guess our legal counsel would have to contact them. Want to do it. But the closest no. one is Primer, Piper, Piper, Eagleston, and Kramer in Montpelier. Which has done this before for the, for the banks. And then there's Darby, Coulter, and Roberts in Waterbury. So are, does it sound like we have to call, we have to initiate the call we with them? We have to make the call to It's them, not like built into the application that those No, we have to get their get legal opinion. Okay. Have and that's what I took away. Have we business with either of those firms? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, it sounds like though, because we're right in the holidays and this thing is due, that we need to get on the horn right now with them tomorrow and say, can you be a legal opinion for this? I would, suggest, I would suggest what we do is contact Rob Halpert and have him contact them and see if they will accept him to do this work. No, that's no, that's not how it works. Peter, I actually have to, I just, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. We, we, in, all, in all the loan documents you had, a lot of them have been done by Premier and Piper. It really it is happen. just... Yeah, it's really just boilerplate stuff. I'm not yeah. wrong on this, right? No, I mean, no. you're a taxable authority. You can always raise money for, you can always tax people to get money. That's you're we're no risk. A municipality is zero risk. And those things go with every right. single one of those. Well maybe we, we just maybe we okay. just go to Primer and Piper. I'm I c I don't think it's a big deal to do. I think we just need to initiate it and get it done. Is that I Derby mean, and I don't Coulter even know what to ask them. I, I mean, you know all we have to do is just send this to, I have a guy at Darby and Coulter. I just send it to him and say, Can you guys do this for us? We'll take it they'll say sure okay. it'll take ten minutes. So can okay, I leave so that, that with you? Yeah, I wasn't going to go to work for the rest until Christmas, but I'll send it in. Oh, my daughter's well, from that. Yeah. That's well, then, right. so, so just I email mean, this to me, and I'll send it to him. I just don't know what I'm. I mean, it's I a it's a that form before. that they have to fill out. I just really think form? it's just I really. Don't know what it is. It's really. I'll show you something. Else. You want me to call? Yeah, it's really it's really basic. I, I'll call. I'll do it. Or whatever you want to do. If you, if you want me to do it, I'll do it. It, no, I'm just saying, you know if you were busy, you know it, I can just say we're applying for the loan yeah. and we need to have... And I'm sure we're, we're not going to be the only municipality that's no. going to be doing this. No. Yeah, these guys do this crap all the time. Stitchell Page and Butcher. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll do it whatever. right now. Okay, yeah. Do it tonight. Yeah. Do it tonight. tonight. Okay, great. And CC one of us on it. Sure. CC me oh, on absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay, thank you for doing that, <laughs> And the Sarah. only other thing... All right, so we need a motion. 
Sorry, go ahead. We got until January 10th, so, but this needs to be addressed first. Right. And But all the other information we can get. Just upload. and It's just upload. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so thank you so for doing that. So do we need a motion? Before, before we do that, I, so I'm on their site, and this, this says Friday, January 5th. Right, but they changed, they changed it, it in the meeting. Okay. Yep. Yep. To the tent. It's to the tent. I, I thought I remembered that, yeah, but they did. when I'm looking at this, yep. it says the fifth. It was our yeah. friend Carol. Yeah. Yes, Carol Dawes. <laughs> yes. Who said she was taking her first vacation in like 20 years, yes. and could she have an she extra asked day? For an extension. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, is there a motion to um, uh, give Dorinda the authority to apply for a flood loan of 1.3 percent interest from the Vermont Bond Bank to cover the road repairs? And expenses not reimbursed oh. by FEMA? All right. Second. Is there a second? Randy seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you, um, Dorinda and Sarah, for taking care of that. Okay. So we're skipping over that section there. It's uh, We're still 10 minutes behind. And looks like maybe, Chris, you're here to help us understand the next thing on the agenda, which is considering WCUUSD's request that all Washington Central Unified School ballots for the 12, March 5th, 2024 school meeting be mailed to all active, not challenged Middlesex voters at the school district's expense with some action likely. Is that why you're here, Chris? Other than CU. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like to share, uh, share some information about this letter that we've received? Mm -hmm. I think it's just asking you to um, approve this. It's the same effort Make that this, we took move for this last language. Year, right? Yeah, similar to last. Although I think the, I think you're right, Sarah. The way it reads is the district's going to send it out, not you guys. Yeah, I've already clarified that yeah. on the floor. Okay, the district. So the district is going to get our mailing list. This is what they did last year. They're going to we're going to send them our, our checklist. Uh, and we're and they are going to take that to the printers and they will mail all the ballots so, so the printer will mail all the ballots we won't do it all we'll do is handle the incoming ballots so we basically just need your permission to we need a motion that. yeah yeah so okay and here's the proposed language for the motion we're not we're i will not, move that the town of middlesex allow washington central unified union school district to distribute ballots for the wc uusd annual meeting the uh, USPS mail to all active, not challenged registered voters on our town checklist. All right, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, Vic seconds. All those in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 All righty, great. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. So next year I'll come back, but it will be to see Randy. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're next after that. No, okay, and, and just a me. quick question, although we've already we've already voted on it. Every town has to pass this in order for it yeah. to actually yes. happen, right? Okay, yep, yeah. yeah. cool. All righty. So, Chris, you could you let Doug uh, forward that? I can also email him. Just let them know. Yeah. All righty. Hey, guess what? We're back on, t on target. Yay. Approving Vermont Emergency Management's request to serve as grantee in the 15 Middlesex properties that have applied for buyouts through the hazard mitigation program, signing the MOU, the FEMA model statement of assurance, and the maintenance agreements that would require the town to maintain the properties once they are returned to their natural state, action likely. Sarah, would you like to share something about this with us? <laughs> yes, so the good news is um, that the state of Vermont is going to take over the buyout, the administration of the buyouts for us. Okay. What, the, what you were signing here, if you've read through the documents, is basically that you will, the town, the town will be left with two responsibilities. One is making sure that nothing is ever developed on those properties. And the second is that there will be some sort of maintenance. The maintenance agreement, that it looks like it's, it's per property, but um, it's basic, it's just really, it's, it's very limited. Um, you know, don't, don't, let the, don't let these empty lots become junkyards. Mm -hmm. Don't let them be trash dis disposal sites. So um, that's it. And you, by the way, 28 Rich Road now is flat. It's gone. Everything is, oh. it's all removed. We're having, uh, Dorinda and I are having a meeting with 
uh, Vermont Emergency Management next week to show them whatever bills we have incurred and see if we can get a be on the fast track for funding to get to close that out entirely. So that's done. It's actually a nice little park. And the next thing the town has to do is consider downgrading that road to a legal trail so that the road crew doesn't have to deal with it anymore. Okay. Cool. Do so, we have to mow all that? Just I didn't say, I don't think mowing is It says is it has key. to stay in open green space. It has to stay in open green space. So we can't space. let it just become Right, overrun. but I'm just thinking budget-wise that think we need to start plugging money in if they're going to be starting to mow several acres of land. That's not going to be... Uh, there's no requirement that we keep it like a golf course. No, but I'm you just saying that you're once certainly going to have some kind of maintenance there. It says keeping streams, channels, culverts, and storm drains clear of obstructions and debris, keeping detention... There's nothing that says it says routine maintenance of... Uh, you know, big, it's just there's nothing that's. I don't even think it says mowing in here. Does it doesn't say keep it? Did it say keep it? Open, keeping it open? Well, that's in the it, other agreement. It did say open green space. I read right. somewhere. That, so, I'm, I was just looking at the maintenance. Maybe agreement. we need to well, plan on brush hogging it once or twice a year. Or it something doesn't say like that, that we have to do anything like that. It just. I think what they really wanted to make sure is that it doesn't turn into junkyards. Um, I have an issue with the 90 days of settlement removing existing structures. That it's, if we have 15 houses and they all settle around the same time, where are we going to find people to remove within 90 days? Yeah, good point. Can we change that? Can we just Remember cross it out? Problem. But then right. is that the model is that the 360 issue? days. Well, first of all, that's, that's not. That's again, that's, that's not our gonna issue. That's that they're going to handle. The state of Vermont's that. doing that. Oh, this is their signing. This they're signing. It was so oh. we're, we're, we're just saying. Okay, oh, this is removing all of our, the burden for us. We no longer okay. have to send out for bids. We no longer have to oversee it. We, this is because they're going to take over everything. Nice. We basically have to submit a report every three years or something like that. Yeah, we still have to do that right. now with 191 and 190. Yeah. We have to turn in photos to, to the So we have to sign the it's MOU. Not cluttered with cars. It's not cluttered with cars. I'd like to make a motion, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I would like to make a motion that we go ahead with this. Me too. Uh, I'd authorize uh, Liz's yep. signature. Thank you. signature. Whoa, hold on there, everybody. No. <laughs> uh, okay, so any further discussion? I just want to add that, this, that Middlesex has more bio properties than any other municipality. Is this a cause to celebrate? I don't think so. I don't either. Oh, <laughs> so it removes some burden that historically uh, the office here has been right. dealing with. Right. But no, I get that. Yeah. It, it uh, yeah, every every one of those properties that comes off the list affects us in some way. It affects shape or us, form. yeah, because we still have to pay taxes. We're not going to cut <clears> that. <throat> we're not going to cut the salaries because we're not plowing that road anymore. So it's. It'll be interesting it to see. It does reduce our expenses, though. And please keep in mind that we have, although there are 15 applications, I am very doubtful that we're going to get anywhere near 15 buyouts. Oh, that people actually want to do the I buyout. Think there are several people already I know. For example, one property has changed hands, so that person is not going to get the pre-flood appraisal on that property gotcha. if they're interested. Two people, three people have fixed up their houses really nicely. Um, and they're enough that they're, I think, one has been got a loma which is a an adjustment to the flood map so they're no longer in the flood zone so they actually might be able to be disqualified i think they're going to stay there i don't think so we may not get all 15. Sure, I don't think all righty that bad okay so we did have a first and second with some <coughs> further discussion so all those in favor of was that peter and, and it, was randy. it was peter who uh moved it and randy who seconded okay, nice. it all those in favor of approving uh, VM uh, request to become the grantee, say aye. 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 And aye. opposed? Alrighty. Yay. That'll be helpful, huh, Sarah? Oh, my God. Yay. Okay. So signing a warning for a February 6, 2024 site visit at 5 p.m. to Welch Park Drive, followed by a public hearing in town hall immediately thereafter to consider turning Welch Park Drive into a Class 3 town road via deed and acceptance from the Welch Park Association action likely. Peter. You like bet. Let's do it. Okay. I'll move it. Okay. Uh, anyone, anyone seconding it? 
I'll second it. Vic is seconding. Okay, any discussion? I'm just wondering. We, Where is question, it? <laughs> we, we've, we've been talking about that. Uh, when I say we, it's like uh, the road the people. And before we, before we do we that, have to sign this? I mean, that road's in pretty bad shape. Are we going to do any, we're going to fix that? Is it pavement? No. Oh. And at the same, what's that? That road's not pavement. It is at the beginning, but once you get to the fire station, it is. Oh, okay. And then, of course, the fire station is another nightmare that, it's another, well, it's another issue down there. I mean, that, you remember we had the meeting down there last year to celebrate the, uh, the joining of the select board and the fire, remember how rough it was? You didn't even want to drive it. I, I was just wondering, is there any thought of uh, addressing that? Yeah, I mean, with this, with this okay. we're going to end up maintaining that roadway. Right. I mean, that's my understanding. Though, because, it's, because it's class three, we will get state aid for whatever that amounts to. But yes, oh, we're, we're taking off in, in, in lieu of getting rid of all the hullabaloo and mess of Welch Park, we are going to be taking over responsibility for that road, correct? There's nobody, there's no, there's no getting those people to chip in to upgrade the road a little bit? Before we do that? Yeah. Or a I part would. of it? <laughs> Both those driveways that I, say, I would say probably the trade off on that is that we're going to continue being responsible for the water and everything else. I just, I believe me, I know that road over time is going to need some work. And certainly the fire department parking lot is going to need some work, already needs some work, which really isn't part of this. But right. the road is certainly passable, it's usable. And we need to do this to make the steel happen. So we haven't decided to do it yet. We got to have that. We got to have this inspection. Then we've got to have the public hearing and then we're going to decide. So okay. if people really think we shouldn't do it, that's the time to say we shouldn't do it. But right. man, oh man, it would be a giant step backwards at this point in time to, to do that. And then guess what? We're going to be responsible for our portion of our portion of fixing that road anyway, which is about 30%, I think. So, right. We're going to get some state aid. That's going to offset some of the other part, but there is going to be yes, there is going to be some uh, some expense. But the good news yeah. is, we've been plowing the road now. You know, so the winter maintenance we've been doing anyway. I have a question. Are you going to have yep. a quorum to go to inspect that road? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, I well, we'd need the three of us to definitely. We'd need the three there. of us to be there, and maybe he could be on a Zoom. I can on the phone. Be there on, a zone. Somebody's on the got phone. A computer that can connect this is there. happening February sixth. How long are you in Colorado? Indefinite. I'm trying, to I'm trying to deal with my wife's health issues okay. and some other things. It's going to be a while. It's going to be a while. Okay. So, um, make sure I'm here. Well, the pressure is really <laughs> on. Uh. I guess I'm here. I've already got it on there as meeting at Welch Park. Yeah, so do I. I meet at Welch Park at 5 o'clock. Um, okay, so a quorum is three. And, Peter, if you needed to be, we could have you on the phone. <coughs> so I think that's okay. That's a good certainly, question. I'm certainly very familiar with that road. I've walked over every inch of it many times. So okay. I'd be glad to do the phone, yeah. All righty. Um, okay, so we did have a first and second, didn't we? we he, he moved it, and who seconded it? You did? Okay, Vic seconded it. So um, if there isn't any further discussion, all those in favor of signing the warning? I already did. I know, I did too. <laughs> Say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. Okay, the ayes have it. All righty, it is, we're on to other business. We've got the orders that we need to sign. Um, correspondence, Sarah? No. Um, just so you guys know, on the orders, um, I am not sending out one of the all seasons checks because it was coded incorrectly, so we have to void it and reissue another one. Is that but, a C or a B? Well, that was the whole issue. That was the issue, right? Mm -hmm. right. I, I, I can't. 
Yeah. So we're going to void this check and have her cut another one, but I will sign the new one, but it won't match okay. up with this check number, just so you know. The check number won't match, but the dollars will. The dollars will be the same. And the other curve that I got thrown is that people on Rich Road are all terrain. I won't be Instead of all seasons. Oh, all yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. What? Yeah. yeah. But so this one we're going to, I'm going to have her void it and reissue a new check. Um, okay, and then the only other thing that um, we need to talk about, we did get um, some correspondence from our board member, Bridget. Um, and unfortunately, she's having some uh, it's COVID side effects that are making it difficult for her to participate in select board. And her doctor has recommended that she be um, not taking on extra job duties. Um, and she has um, been told by her doctor that she needs to step back from extra duties, including the select board. Um, so what this kind of means is that we probably need to, we need to put it out there that um, we have a vacancy until town meeting day when there will be a vote. Um, is, is that she right? has. I, I agree with that approach. I don't think it makes sense to go through the process to appoint somebody for a month or a month and a half until town meeting. Chair, can I say uh, Go ahead, Sarah. Yep. So statutorily, Peter, when a vacancy is created, you have 10 days to uh, appoint somebody. You can't let a chair, you can't let a seat sit empty no matter how many months there are around, there are left. Okay. Well, you, we well, you, you have, have to, to. You need to, to notify. To process, we have to request letters of interest. We have to. We have to do the process. We can't just appoint somebody. That's right? correct. Okay. You, have, you have to put People out a apply. notice saying that the, there's yes, a, that somebody has stepped down and that the board um, is seeking applications for candidates to replace yeah. her until the March fifth, yeah, twenty twenty four town meeting. Signed, but she's and that process has to start back. Step back. It is. Okay, well, we just do that. that to you. Yeah, you can read it. It's okay. just there's some health issues that shouldn't be that are private. Is there any timeline on how long the process you has to be done within a certain time frame, or just just the timeline that we have to worry about is, is starting the process? I I forget. I think that um, I know that there is a process that allows the town to challenge whoever you. So I'll have to go through that again. I, I just have to go look at the statute. I mean, I'm still, we're still waiting for an official resignation letter from her. Yeah, she needs to have it. Oh, but, okay, I see, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, I'll post that tomorrow. Okay, that'd be great. <clears throat> so if you know of anyone who's interested in serving for the next couple of months, or maybe in the future. Should, uh, I don't know what the right word, but but we should uh, we should first of all thank Bridget for her service and say you know we hope she gets better soon or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what we should do, but we shouldn't just let her disappear into the sunset. Um, do you think we need to have her officially, um, or is that asking a lot of her right now? Yeah, I think that we should accept her. I, we should accept this this email that she sent to me. I had reached out to her to ask if she was coming to the board meeting because I knew that that um, she might not be present. And I wanted to make sure we had a quorum. Um, and uh, and so that was the email that she sent. So I would say we accept that as a resignation. Really? I, I would. Okay. Yeah. Don't you have to make I move, I move we accept her resignation based on that email. Yes, with regret. And um, with regret. a second? Yeah. OK. All those in favor of? Um, accepting Bridget Browning's resignation from the board due to unforeseen circumstances. Say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Um, <coughs> oh, the other correspondence that I also wow. received was just an email from um, Dave Megida asking about the town hall and where we were with that. And Sandy um, replied just what we already know that um, that the board is is uh, considering putting on the warning 
um, that the town voters vote at town hall about adding um, an extra 40 plus thousand dollars for a design study for the town hall. I still haven't heard back from the architect to get an actual number. Um, so that's the next thing I need to get. And Sarah, what is our time frame on making sure that gets in on a timely manner? Um, well, I mean, when you approve the warning, that's going to be in the warning. So it's got to be by, uh, God, I think it's like January 25th okay. or something. So, all right. I'll make sure I get that from them. Anything else that comes before the board? Well, I have a question. I mean, the next meeting is January 2nd, and, you know, not much is going to happen. Do you guys want to move the meeting to the subsequent Tuesday, or do you want to, what do you want, how, how do you want to do that? I'm just worried that you're going to have a meeting in With two weeks and nothing's going to happen. Uh, well, um, so we talked with Bob about giving us our um, number by that date. But January's for the not 16th. January 2nd. No, 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 I know. Are you saying that we have them two weeks in a row? To the 9th and the 16th. Or something. If you just, it just seems to me as though if you're going to have a meeting on January 2nd, I'm not sure we're going to, yeah, what we're, we're going to do. Or we just skip it all together and we only have one meeting. Wow. Yeah, I, think you're gonna, sure. I think you're going to need two. I think you have a lot to decide. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have a, I think you need a uh, you're budget. You're going to have an extended meeting on the 16th if you oh, skip Oh, that's right, because we have all of our, yeah. All right, so, so, so you're saying two weeks in a row. I'm saying that I just don't think that the January 2nd is going to be the most productive. I think it'll be a waste. No, no, no. I, I hear what you're saying. Right. So I'm just throwing that out there. You guys decide. What do you guys want? So when's the next? The 16th is our second normal meeting? Correct. Yes. Yes. The 9th, the 9th would be the Tuesday before that. Okay. And because then if we do it on the 9th and the, well, here's the thing. So we go from the Here's the thing, you guys. If we do, there's five Tuesdays in March. Right. That's a lot of Tuesdays. Um, but we've also got statutory So if we did the 9th and the 16th, this is what we could do, the 9th and the 23rd. Oh. I'm only saying that no, be no, I just need to go because, because then we have an calendar. extra week anyway. There's that fifth Tuesday no, no, that no, would put us back on the 1st right. and the 3rd. I'd, ra I'd rather... I'd rather just oh. do two the other right thing in a row. That I will say, okay. if we have to have all our reports in by the 25th, all right, fine. If things are in a ninth and sixteenth. Ninth and sixteenth. That gives yeah. us Sarah no time. Not going any later than the yeah. Okay, ninth and sixteenth. Um. All right, I'm going to change that date. All right. Any other matters that may come before the board? When? So when? When does? Uh, if you if 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 one which I'm not, but if one is going to run, when do they have to have their uh, petition in? You have to have your petition in. Just let me just check. Oh, out. thank you for reminding me. I have my petition. Uh, yep, all signed. Sir, is my petition complete? Yes. Your okay, petition must be in by 5 p.m. Monday, January 20th. January what? 20th. 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 No. Because uh, that, that'll have to happen for... In order to get on the warning. Right, but that'll have to happen for... For, for this new seat. For, for the Bridget resignation seat. of Bridget, right? Yeah. Everybody. Well, Other, no, not otherwise. for not for some not for appointing someone who applies. Right. No, but I then again, that. they have to do it. You're right. Yes, that's. A, otherwise, they'd have to be right in. They have to be right in. Yeah. Hold on. Um, so yeah. you're going to have a hard time appointing somebody and having them get there. By what date again? January what? Twentieth. Twentieth. Yeah. Well, well, very short time. Right yeah. Well, hold on. I mean, if we if you have a meeting, if you have a meeting on the ninth. We well, might already have enough candidates by then. No, 9th and the 16th. Candidates. I'm sorry? You've got the 16th, too, which is before. The 16th. So, and then we could also have an emergency meeting if we need to see. Right, so you can, it won't be that bad. And then they, you know, it's only 15 signatures. Well, it's not going to be a long term for that, for that appointment. No. That's right. What was Two her? Two meetings in February, and that's it? Yep. What did you say? For that appointment, yeah, that would be a short, but short term. 
in case anything happens, we would hate to not have a quorum. Right. Right. Okay. Um, I understand that. Any other matters that may come before the board? Peter's head is gone. <laughs> is he okay? No, I'm still here. <laughs> Didn't fall down. Didn't fall on the floor or anything. I'm still here. Are you having fun in Colorado? Uh, yes. Okay. Have you? Okay, let's uh, end the meeting if we're going to talk great about Colorado. Great to be with the kids and grandkids. It is. It is challenging being away from home. Yeah. Especially the waters are rising and the snow banks are rising. I know. Okay. Not rising too are much we adjourned? this week. Uh, not quite yet. Is there anything else that we want to talk about before we adjourn? Okay, this meeting is adjourned at 7.04. It was supposed to end at 7.30, so let's give another cheer. Good job, Liz. All righty. Thank you.